Hey guys, Eric here. I'm out on my morning walk during the apocalypse, I might add. So this morning I've read more Urban Samaji, which, you know, after today I think uh, I'll move on to something that's not Urban Samaji so we can, you know, talk about something different. For example, I was thinking about reading some books from unrelated disciplines like engineering or art and relating it back to guitar making that way. But for now, I'm still finishing off this Urban Samaji book, and so that's what I'm going to be talking about. So there's two things that I really honed in on today that I thought was very interesting. First was a abstract art concept, design concept, called the Golden Mean. And then the second thing is the axis of rotation of the bridge and where it's actually centrally located. So first let's talk about the golden mean. So what is the golden mean? Well, the golden mean is a number, and that number is 1.618. I cannot think of a more arbitrary sounding number than 1.618, which I think is what makes this so interesting. So apparently the Greeks, the ancient Greeks, a long time ago, discovered that things that look beautiful and in the right proportion tend to have a mathematical relationship to itself, to the components within itself. And when you figure out what the distance between components are within that piece of uh, beautiful art or just beautiful thing in nature, the Greeks found out that there seems to be a common factor, which is 1.618. So if you're drawing out aesthetic elements, like say in an inlay or something like that, you might have one element of the design be a certain length, and then the next adjacent element would be that length times 1.618. So it would be longer by a fairly specific amount. Now, of course, this, even within nature and within great works of art, this varies, but it, it's rarely exactly um, 1.618, but it's often very, very close, and that's what makes it so interesting. And what I find personally interesting about this is that I like to believe in the intuition of artists. And all of this talk of 1.618 can sound very overly rational and almost antithetical to the concept of art itself. However, I am also a rationalist, and I really do believe um, in scientific approaches and that all things are ultimately explicable. So I see this more as a justification for why the intuition of artists actually works. So on a subconscious level, I think people are making these value judgments when they look at beautiful things. And on that subconscious level, some part of their brain, deep, deep part of their brain, is doing this calculation or something close to it. And that frees up the conscious mind to rest on its intuitions, which is why artists don't have to be professional mathematicians in order to create beautiful art. Their subconscious is, is doing that work in the background. But anyway, this is something very cool and interesting to think about when you're designing guitars and particularly the aesthetic appointments on guitars. Uh, in the book, Urban Samaji had a picture of the outline of a guitar and some actual demonstrations by line drawings of how these proportions exist in the upper and lower bout and waist of the guitar. So there's various ways that you can draw a straight line from one part of those curves to another and then either divide or multiply that by the golden mean and end up with 
a line that exists somewhere else on the guitar. For example, um, let's say the width of the lower bout and the width of the waist. There's a relationship there that relates to this golden mean. And again, not necessarily that anyone ever sat down and did this math to figure this out. They just attacked it with an artist's eye and that's what they came up with. It's more of a post hoc justification to say that it's related to this mathematical concept. Very, very cool, very interesting. Um, I'd actually like to read more about that because there was only a short section in the book as sort of an addendum at the end of the book that was relating to this concept. So what's the other concept uh, that I've read about today? It's the concept of the Bermuda Triangle of the bridge. So, and I believe this is an original Irvin Samaji phrase here, the, the Bermuda Triangle of the bridge. So when he's referring to the Bermuda Triangle, excuse me, I can't speak right now. When he's referring to the Bermuda Triangle, he's talking about the triangle-shaped part of the top, which is the bridge and the two X-brace arms that form a triangle in sort of the middle of the guitar's vibrational footprint. And so... In most understandings of how the modal movements of the, the top work, you assume that the center point for those vibrations moving outward is on the bridge itself. But what Samaji was talking about here was how that stiff, the stiffness of that triangle there, the Bermuda Triangle, again, which is the connection between the bridge and the two X-brace arms, actually probably puts that center point of the vibrational axis a little forward of the bridge, which is important to understand and think about when you're designing bracing patterns, because everything is sort of hinges off the idea that the axis of rotation for these vibrational movements is the bridge itself. When in reality, the stiffness that the Bermuda Triangle makes is going to move that axis of rotation a little closer to the center of the X. Now, I don't know what to do with that information, but I'm kind of logging it away in the back of my mind as interesting and potentially useful in the future. And I just wanted to share that with you guys. So anyway, um, it's actually starting to rain on me out here a little bit. So I think I'm going to wrap this up and say, um, have a great day. You know, get some building done. Uh, it's March 20... What is it? March uh, 24th, I think, right now. So, you know, we're all kind of probably quarantined and dealing with this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, I'm personally drinking a lot of elderberry tea, which apparently helps your immune system. Anyway, we have a lot of time to, you know, be to ourselves and work on our guitars or on our projects or just learn new things. So I'm hoping we can all use this time wisely and come out the other end better for it. So with that said, stay safe, stay sane, and get some things done. Bye. If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.